What's up guys? We're getting deep into the weeds this week and talking about tax deductible expenses in private practice. No idea what I'm talking about? No need to worry, I got you covered. We're gonna go into all the details in this week's video. Welcome to Private Practice Skills. I'm Dr. Marie Fang, psychologist in private practice. I post videos offering tools I learned the hard way about starting and growing private practice so that you don't have to. Before we get started, a quick disclaimer. I am not a trained tax professional. I'm just a therapist sharing my thoughts and opinions. So if you're getting started in private practice, be sure to consult with an accountant or other tax professional in order to get yourself started on the right foot. Okay, there's a lot to get into on this subject, so I'm just gonna dive right in. First of all, when you run your own business, the IRS lets you deduct the majority of your expenses. That means that you get to subtract most of your expenses from your income and then just pay taxes on what's left. This is amazing. This essentially means we get a significant discount on all of the things that we have to pay for related to our business. I know many therapists who are not aware of this benefit, so chances are you might be one of them. And if so, that means you're paying money to the IRS that you don't owe them. So let me help you change that in today's video. For the most part, if you're operating as a sole proprietor or a single member LLC, one of the forms you need to complete for your taxes is a form called Schedule C 1040. It looks like this and it's not super complicated to complete. However, you'll see here in part two, expenses, that there's a long list of items that you have to break down your deductions under. When I first saw this list, I was completely overwhelmed. I had no idea what expenses I could count, let alone which tax deductible expense category to list each item in. The whole thing can feel like just one giant jumble. In reality, once you get familiar with it, it's not too complicated. Let me break down some of the more common expenses in private practice, especially if you're just starting out. I created a handy dandy PDF showing the expenses and what category to list them under. Feel free to click the link in the description to snag it for yourself. If you have any expenses not listed on the form, just be sure to check with the IRS about whether those are tax deductible and what category to list them under. So you'll see here on this list, one major category that we get to deduct is advertising. So advertising includes expenses related to either print or online ads, business cards if you have them, brochures, being listed on online directories like Psychology Today, paid online search or AdWords, and any signage like if you have a sign out front advertising your business. Next is rent payments, which is huge. This is a big one for me because I live in a really expensive place and this is my biggest expense. You can also deduct utilities, which primarily reflects your electric bill and if you have one, your business phone line, whether it's a cell phone or a landline. Next, there's an insurance category, which reflects your liability insurance. This isn't the category where you list your health insurance. You can deduct taxes and licenses. So this includes things like the money you pay to have a city business license or renewing your fee as a psychologist, an MFT or whatever licensure you have. This only applies to the renewal fee and not the very first time you ever become licensed. Okay, the next two categories are a bit confusing because there's one called office supplies and another called office expenses and I'm always having to remind myself what the difference is. So the category of office supplies refers to tangible office supplies, while the category of office expenses refers to non-tangible office supplies. So let's go over this, the regular office supplies first. That includes things like cleaning supplies, any postage if you send out snail mail, the usual office supplies, pens, paper, stapler, clipboard, you know, that type of thing that everyone has in their office. Uh, books, magazines, if you have those things out in the waiting room, file cabinet and any affiliated filing supplies, so those file folders, any of those paperwork that you print out, printer ink, and smaller furniture pieces. Now those furniture pieces need to be under $2,500. If it's over, then it goes in a different category, which we'll touch on later. The next category is office expenses, and just a reminder, those are the non-tangible office supplies. So these are things like expenses related to your website, internet hosting fees, the money you pay for your domain name, any web software you use that usually comes with some sort of a monthly fee, things like QuickBooks, 
teletherapy service subscriptions, EHR software, if you pay for things like Dropbox, those all go in the office expenses category, things that you can't touch tangibly and you'll notice most of it is online. The next category is travel and meals. And I love this category because I try to allow myself to travel related to business at least once a year to attend things like a continuing ed conference, for example. So under this category, it includes all types of business travel. So that includes mileage and parking meters for offsite business related meetings, just be sure to log your mileage and what those meetings are for. Travel costs for continuing ed conferences or other business related travel, the cost of meals while you're on those business travels, and also cost of meals for business related meetings even if you're not traveling. So this could be something like if you're consulting with a colleague over lunch. On line 48 of the Schedule C form, there's a category called Other Expenses. Now it's sort of a catch-all category. The upside is there's lots of things that you can include in this sort of miscellaneous category. The downside is it's not immediately clear which items you can include. But here are a couple of the more common items that you're likely to list in this category. Membership fees, like if you're part of the APA or other affiliations, Credit card processing fees, this is huge. I deduct a lot of credit card processing fees since my clients pay me through Square and Square charges me for it. You can deduct all of that in this category. Bank fees, which could include any charges you might have for keeping your checking account or interests related to loans you might have, things like that can go in this category. Also continuing education goes in this category. Obviously all of us are required to keep up our continuing education and it's lovely that we can deduct it. There's also the category of of employee benefit programs, and that's just referring to mostly health insurance and retirement plan benefits. Now there's some stipulations about health insurance and which of us can actually uh, deduct our health insurance or not. And it's way too much to get into in this video. So I'll just link in the description box to some more information about how to figure out if you can deduct your health insurance plan from your business expenses. Okay, then there's this weird category called depreciable assets. So that's referring to office supplies, expenses, or equipment that cost you over $25. $500. So let's say you get a really nice laptop for your business and it costs $2,600 something like that, or maybe a piece of furniture that costs that much. It's called a depreciable expense and it goes in a different category. It's too complicated to elaborate here, but just know that's where that expense goes. Keep in mind that this is just sort of a cursory list if you're just getting started. I mean, if you have things like employees, you do contract work, etc. there's all kinds of other things that you can deduct from your taxes, but hopefully this is enough to sort of get you started. If you have any expenses that we haven't talked about here, go ahead and check with the IRS to see if you can deduct them and to find out what category they're in. I will link to the IRS's incredibly detailed instructions for how to fill out the Schedule C form so that you can find that out. Now that we went through all of these different expenses and their categories, I'm sure you might be wondering, how the heck do I keep track of all of these expenses? I'm a really frugal gal, so I use Google Docs because it's free and I know how to use it, but if you want something that's a little bit more user-friendly designed to help you keep track, you can pay for a software like QuickBooks to help you stay on top of your expenses and make sure that you don't lose anything through the cracks. Well, I hope this video helped you wrap your head around tax deductions while working in private practice. Just a reminder that I do have that PDF we went over for free. There's a link in the description box below if you'd like to have something to print out and help you stay on top of that. Until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well. How are you feeling, buddy? Uh-oh.